All right, gonna tie plain chocolate's T-bone, uh, bucktail version. It's a, just a really sweet fly that uh, it's got this awesome motion that kind of T-bones and jacks go straight 90. Uh, it doesn't if you don't know how to tie it right. Not that I'm saying I know how to tie it right. I've had some success the last couple flies, but it only took me like $2,000 in fly tie materials and, oh, I don't know, like three years of my life. I just couldn't get the taper right or the amount of um, bucktail I was using or something, but... Um, Pro tip, before you go and tie 30 of these without seeing them swim, uh, take them to some water and see if they do what you want them to do because I did not do that and I wasted a bunch of money and time. So that pisses me off. So here we are. We're going to try to do this thing. Um, whatever. Hook. You can tie them with a rear hook and a front hook or just a rear hook. In my professional experience of catching exactly one tiger muskie in my life, um, just having the hook in the back, it seems to have better movement. Um, when you strip it hard, that weight of the hook causes that um, fly to, to jackknife and kind of go 90. Um, easier to cast having one hook. So that may change down the line, but as of right now, I'm a one hook guy. We're using uh, some pretty heavy thread. You could probably use 140 denier or whatever that stuff is that people still use if you're a thousand years old. Um, if you're the rest of the world, you're, you're tying on Vivas pretty much. Uh, this is GSP, gel spun, some scientific name that starts with a P, polyurethane, polyoethane, something with a P, it's gel spun. Uh, it comes in weights of like 30, 50, 100, 150, and 200. That's 50, I think. It's just good because you kind of reef on stuff with these. Um, it's flat and it's really slip. Really slip. It's really slip. This is going terrific so far. Um, I'm challenged. So if you spin your bobbin that way, it doesn't matter which way, but it'll, it'll put kind of an edge um, on the thread and it, it tends to not want to slip as bad. As we go through this fly, I kind of just, I don't want them to fall apart after fishing them a few days or after a few fish. So I'm constantly, uh, super gluing and UV curing and stuff like that to make sure that it, it kind of holds true. Um, you'll see me get up occasionally while I tie this fly. I'll edit it out, but you'll, you'll see some pauses. It's because so this is probably, long story short, the 10th or 12th time I've tried to film tying one of these, so I'm having a lot of fun. Um, two different cameras have two different record times. One can record up to 29 minutes. You know what? doesn't matter. No one fucking cares. Just, it's been a, it's a full-on goat fuck. Not fun, but I really want this fly to be uh, on YouTube because I looked for a lot of... Uh, videos on how to tie it and Blaine ties one a couple like six years ago um but I don't know it's just not super close up and they kind of skip through some stuff it's it's the guys that edited it that made it kind of quick Schultz has a good version but it's just got this repetitive drum beat that I just want to shoot myself in the face uh or put it on mute and there's no talking it just kind of goes through the stages so you know people have done it before me and they did a really good job I'm just you know updating it I guess a little bit so hopefully this this works if not, I just, I guess I'll just try it again. It's just, I really don't want to. I don't want to do it. Anyways, we're going to start here. So, um, get your thread base going about a little bit halfway on the hook, a little bit towards the eye of the hook, though. Um, and then, basically, we're going to tie in some bucktail. This is going to be kind of a chartreuse and white fly. I don't know if I want to start with chartreuse in the back and go to white. This is stuff I probably should have figured out before I started. Let's go white in the back for once. And uh, then we'll move up to chartreuse. If that's okay with everybody. You want to get about two thirds the diameter of a number two pencil. Okay. And then you want to grab this stuff and pull out all the guard hairs down here. 
So you don't need all that, you don't need the bulk, you just want the long, the long pieces. So, you got that? I square off the ends, just, I just take a scissors and just, well, if they weren't duller and shit, works a lot better. Square them off. Yeah, I'd say almost three quarters the way up the hook or a quarter back on the hook, however you want to look at it. Um, spin this guy just to get an edge. One, two, and then you can kind of pull tight. Sometimes it spins around if it... I'm doing a good job. That time it kind of did. There we go. And then a couple more wraps. That's the first part. Kind of trim these up if you want. You don't want to get cut them real short because they'll uh, they'll slip out. So just leave a leave a little bit out there. We're gonna work our thread through this, spin it, and then kind of work. Almost like your figure eighting has worked well for me. Kind of pull that stuff back. Give a couple wraps, and the first part is done. So we got our bucktail back there, and we're gonna add some uh, some flash. I kind of like this bullfrog color we're going to go with. Eh, that would look good on an all white fly. I think I'm just going to go with this, uh, it's kind of pearl, silver, and, uh, and black. Kind of a new, new flash of blue colors coming out that are tri-colored and they're pretty slick. The recipe calls for about 10 to 12 strands of this stuff. I've never been super specific on exact numbers, but um, just kind of look at it. If it seems like a lot, maybe pull a couple out. If you're really specific, you want to follow the recipe exact. 10 to 12 is what uh, Blaine calls for. So I just lay it on top, hold it down couple turns, get my thumb and I, I kind of push down on it and try to separate that flash so it goes towards me. There's a little bit left on top and I rotate the other pieces kind of towards, towards me. It doesn't have to go all the way around. You don't want to do a 360 effect here. So just like that, then flip the other half straight over the top. Same thing. Push down and get the flash moving on that side. So basically, um, essentially the two thirds of the top of that fly is, is covered in flash. Ta-da, you did it. Then uh, you're gonna put in some uh, saddle hackles. We'll go with natural, we're gonna do a little combo of natural and chartreuse. So, you want some longer ones, maybe like uh, 10 to 12 inches. Now, mine's got a twist in there. But it's, it's nice and long. That will work itself out in the water. I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to not use it. See a little twist in there? Whatever, right? So, pop that guy in, couple turns, and if the feathers on this side, have the stem go across the hook to my side. That's how you get that nice arc. If you've ever wondered how the, um, the winter steelhead guys uh, get that feather to just prop up perfect, that's, that's the key there. Um, Jason Osborne uh, showed me that years ago. And I was like, oh, that's how they do it. So, shout out Jason Osborne. He opened up a Portland Fly Shop quite
quite a few years ago. Four or five years ago now. So if you're in the area, check that shop out too. It's good stuff. Okay, that guy's in there. That's two. We're going to do all natural on this guy, and then as we go forward, we'll, we'll, we'll bust out some some chartreuse ones. Man, I twisted the absolute fuck out of these guys in here. I must have put it away real bad. It's also like, can I get a wider package than this hairline? Can you can you just put it a little bit more loose so, you know, the $30 I spend on this, I can actually use some of the feathers? It's just plastic packaging. I know it doesn't cost anything. I would appreciate that. So, this guy. And then, uh, and one more. Cool. And I'm just peeling the, the feathers off to expose the stem. There's no, no big secret going on back there. So I'm going to put it on your guys' side, and then I'm going to have the stem come over to my side to get that nice arcing, right? That we just talked about. And so what that essentially does is that kind of tents that flash and um, bucktail kind of protects it and just does one of these things it kind of puts it in a little two on top two on the bottom um, do I think it does really anything protecting those feathers I don't know but it looks cool it makes me go hey that's pretty cool because he said it was going to do this thing and then he tied it in like he said it did and then he look at it and it does that so hey pretty neat if your feathers aren't setting up the way you want them to great thing about UV cure is you just make them do it. So just kind of dab some on there. Like so. And then uh, just like kind of hold them in the form that you want. It's like just hold them up like that. That's never going anywhere. And then same thing, get these two guys. Put a little UV cure on them, hit them with the light. And we're good. Let's go. Now, have I fucked myself after I just said, like, wow, look how cool this is? And then it's like, oh, it doesn't work. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. So those guys there. I did. When I, when I did the bottom section, I kind of hosed myself. So let's just fix it, right? So now I'm going to put it on that side where I want it. There we go. Now it's where, where I wanted it. That's kind of a cool thing about these bigger flies. It's like arts and crafts. You just kind of move stuff around the way you want it to. It's not like a size 18 parachute atoms or something where you're like, oh, I'm fucked. So it's like, nah, just move some stuff around. The fact that these are all twisted and stuff too is not really, really making it set up great. But essentially, I mean, that's what we're going to be looking at right there, okay? And then we're going to add some bucktail. Um... We'll do a little white. A little white to start. And obviously there's no real exact pattern. Like you don't have to use a certain color this way or that way. Just dealer's choice. And then just kind of square that up right there. Like so. Put it right there. And one kind of loose wrap, two loose wraps, and then you can kind of pull. Get your thumbnail down in between the previous uh, materials that you tied in. Kind of move it around. Get it to kind of go around that, that hook. And the bucktail you do want all the way around. You don't want it to just be on the top two thirds. You want it to be... 360 degrees, covering. Man, my thread is like, I think I got some Zappa Gap 
down in there and it's just barely nicking my thread because as it comes out I can see it just like fraying a little bit might have to swap um, bobbits because it's kind of bugging me just trimming some of that up okay now we're gonna get a little chartreuse bucktail gonna grab the top here and and pull out all the all the guard hairs and this one We're going to actually tie in hollow tie it, which is just another way to say tie it in reverse. So get that where we want it. One over, nice and loose. Second one, and you can kind of pull it tight. And same thing, work that bucktail around, kind of pinching it, getting your your thumbnail in it and I'll kind of spin around that hook advantages to having a rotary vise are real good here And bucktail is very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Durable. So you can really, really get in there and kind of manhandle it. Okay. That guy's good. We're going to get uh, hollowed out just big pen or whatever. Whatever you got. Oops. Push it back. Pull all that back. Little guy's kind of hanging out there. That one just doesn't want to go, does it? There we go. And just build a thread dam. If you're not familiar with thread dams, um, just wrap your thread a bunch of times uh, close to the materials and then kind of wrap towards, you know, this way towards the eye, building a little bit of a ramp. Um, what that does is as it gains height towards those materials, it kind of controls the taper of how, you know, how open or closed you want that, that bucktail to flare out. And it's dealer's choice again at that, at that time. I, in the rear section, I want it pretty, pretty flat, not flat, flat, you know, I don't want it straight with the hook, but I don't want to have this huge, you know, shoulder back here at the tail. So, you know, maybe a little, a little lower than that. Don't make yourself crazy over it, just like that. It's great, right? Whip finish. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hit it with the UV. There. And then I am going to swap threads because, well, I got chartreuse on that other bobbin. I'll try it with six odd. I don't think I'm going to be able to tie this fly with Viva six odd, but, you know, there's just too much reefing going on. So let's just swap it out. Here's a little trick if you guys didn't know this one when you're threading your bobbins. If you don't have a bobbin threader, uh, get your thread a little wet. Once you get it in there, oh, if I can see it. Once you get it halfway in, just inhale and it, and it comes right through. So you're good. 
So that's that first piece. Now we're going to attach um, uh, Chocolate's big game shank. It's uh, 28 millimeter on this guy. And we're going to use uh, three of these, I believe. So it's a rear hook and then three of these. He, sometimes he puts a 40 mil at the, at the very front. Um, I haven't done that yet. This is just the way I kind of, my take on it. And it's not better. It's definitely not better. Um, it's just, it, I don't know. I've tied them a bunch of different ways and this one swims really well. So that's what I'm sticking with. As I get uh, probably more experience um, and I catch a couple more, I might try uh, tying different, uh, different ways. But like I said, I, I tied just dozens and dozens of these and a lot of them didn't really shake out the way I wanted it to. Now they are, so, I mean, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. It works, so that's what we're sticking with. So you got this rear section. I'm going to pop that guy back in. Now I will say, um, the thing about these shanks, uh, there's a lot of room back here um, at the attach, the attachment point so to speak and if you don't close that up um, your flies will t they tend to foul just from casting because they're just they're so big um, and they have so much room back here that they take advantage of that room and before you know it um, your fly is fouled to kingdom come so another trick I picked up from the internet is get a little uh, Super glue, just kind of dab it all the way back on the top of that that shank, and then as you wrap up it, just don't pull down very hard. Just you're just like laying it on there. Really, you can see it's like loose, right? I'm just loosey goosey because um, I'm just trying to patch that hole, so to speak, all the way up to the jaws, and then back down until basically you can't see through that that shank anymore. That hole. That whole hole, redundant, um, is completely filled in. That's fun when your bobbin's just squeaking. That's that's good stuff. So what that's gonna do basically, that's gonna drive me crazy, uh, is not allow that fly to foul as much. Now it's not a guarantee fix all. It still happens to me, but it just happens less. So I do it. And that was a guy. Oh, I think I just remember, I think his name's Nate. He works for and guides for Mad River Outfitters. They're all over YouTube. They got they do a really good job. They got a bunch of cool videos and uh, yeah, he's really good tire. He whips up some sweet bugs. Um, so yeah, he, I saw him. I think it was on a Polar Changer. He was tying. He said that, and I picked that up, and I was like, oh, that's cool. That's it. That's what's neat about YouTube. Um, also, this thing. That's what you can do with that right there. Um, yeah, the cool thing about YouTube is you got all these really good tires on there uh, and you can pick up just little things from each one. Uh, it's super helpful and just kind of melting pot, throw them all together and, and make your make your own. So this fly utilizes uh, body tubing, the quarter inch, and this is obviously clear. This stuff was a motherfucker when I started out using it. Um, there's a pretty big trick to it, and if you don't know it and don't do it, you are fucked. So, first things first, put some uh, super glue right in the middle of that shank. We're only going to put one, one uh, body tube in on this. The second part is light this and melt it. That's fine. Now, when you melt it, it closes. It's a perfect circle, basically, right? And that's fine, because it's just going over this shank, and we're tying it in. Now what I didn't know is that you got to do it different on on the front end. Dude, I can't tell you how much frustration that was and just like fist fighting this stuff. Just going like, how, how can people just think this is a good idea? Like this is what you want to tie with. It's, it's stupid. Turns out I was stupid. See the difference? This stuff right here, just light it real quick. As soon as it starts to melt, you got to push on it. So what that does is it opens it up, right? It's a lot larger, um, but it still melts the end so it won't just fray and com come apart completely on you. So I didn't know that. 
So I was just melting it the same as the as the rear section, so as a as a circle, and then trying to push it and just like trying to pry it over all this stuff. I'm like, how does anyone do this? So now that you've pushed that, when you push it back, now watch. It just goes straight over it. You do have to take the, the shank out, so. But look at that, just like right over the top of that, and then push it forward. And it's like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'm plain chocolate now. That's for others to decide, but I just did that perfect. You're gonna feel like a fucking champ. And you're like, oh yeah, I can use this stuff easy. So, get it right to the tie-in point. Maybe I need to go to speech therapy. I, I think all I know to say now is like, more bottom hand, you're dropping your rod tip, you know, pull down, like that's not a man, that's bullshit. That's it, that's all I got. If I have to form complete sentences, well, you, you've seen what happens. Nothing good. <sighs> okay, couple half hitches. Boom goes the dynamite. So now, we wanna get some UV. Just put a little glob on there. And then push this back. Look at that, sweet damn, right? Professional. Now that the UV cures in there, and obviously this is not solid, it's tubing, you can just get that light and it cures it in there. You don't wanna hit the light before you fold it back over because it, it tends to not want to, to fold. So that's it. Cut that guy out of there and start it back up right in front. So this is another part of this fly that's key and Blaine addresses it on his video. I'm pretty sure the other ones do too, but you have to build a little bit of a, um, a thread dam or a thread bump. I'm using the same terminology, thread bump, meaning about an eighth of an inch um, in front of that body tubing, just keep wrapping the thread on top of itself. You just want to build a, a, a bump here. And so what that does, once I build it, I'll kind of explain more because you, you need both hands. Need some WD-40 on this um, bobbin. I do something real gross. Just put a bunch of saliva all over that. That was definitely gross. And now this side. Uh-oh. See if that fixed it. Probably not. Um, oh, it did. It was gross, but it fixed it. There we go. Um, that's pretty good. It doesn't have to be a giant bump, but it definitely has to be higher than the shank, okay? So what's what happens here is you've got your, your body tubing. You build that little thread bump. So here's body tubing. Here's a little thread bump, right? So it's higher than your shank's right here. So when you tuck that... Uh, bucktail in, it's not going to slide down the shank because it, it wants to. It kind of slides and it hits that thread, that uh, thread bump. Okay, so now that we got that in there, we're going to grab some more bucktail. Let's go with white. And again, you want about this one. Yeah, it's the next one. This one's still about two thirds uh, the diameter of a number two pencil. If you go all the way to a number two pencil, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but again, like most things, just trial and error. You'll just get used to how much you need to to uh, pull out. That's the thing is you're gonna you're gonna spend some money tying these flies. I mean, if you, if you tie flies at all, you know that it's expensive. You don't save any money, so you know, don't be too hard on yourself if you go to tie this fly and you screw the pooch royally. It's just like it's a it's kind of a difficult fly to tie as far as getting the right um, amounts of material in there, just like with any fly, I guess. So see how it's it's nice and in there. It's in that little in that little canyon, that little wedge. Can see it's flared up and then same song and dance get your thumb in there and just start really getting that bucktail in a 360 fashion around that shank 
And I got pretty lucky because that's pretty much it right there. That's what you get when you get good bucktail. Um, that bucktail is not from Hairline. This is from some guy back east. I forget his name. I found him on Instagram or my buddy Tommy turned me on to him on Instagram. And uh, yeah, he shipped me like six of them or something. I've had them for six months, eight months. Okay, so going to trim some of that because we don't need all that sticking out. And I think, I think Blaine just grabs it and folds it back, but um, I don't know. I don't. So, and then I just kind of wrap it down. That's good. Do I need to cut these little guys off there? No. Am I going to? Yeah. Am I going to keep probably, yeah, you know. Making up questions for myself to answer while I do this video? Yeah! Are you going to like it? No! Are you going to continue watching this video? Probably not. But that's where we're at. So there you go. You got those. Got the bucktail. Um, now we're going to add two more saddle hackles. And we're going to go chartreuse this time because we had, we had white before and... I don't know. Let's switch it up. Pull these guys out. I mean, look at just how fucked that package did to this stuff. Yeah, that looks that looks great. That's that's what I want a thirty dollar bag of feathers to look like. Like at least make the bag like if they're if they're that long hairline, you know, can, can you make the bag this long? Is it okay to, to, to just try to make the bag another five inches long? Is that going to break the bank? Like you just shove a thirty dollar pack of feathers in there, and you're just like, yeah, fuck them. They're gonna buy them anyways. They can't get them else. They can't get them anywhere else. So fuck them. We'll just make shitty feathers. Like this sucks, dude. This is horrible customer service. You guys can do better. But will you? No, because you don't care. <sighs> okay. I don't even know what feather to use now. You're supposed to use kind of fatter, shorter ones, but these are all so fucking kinked. I can't even tell. Like, look at... <laughs> really? Really, bro? That? That's what, that's what I got to work with? Okay. Um, if I actually do finish this, this video and it uh, goes on my YouTube and people are watching this, that wholesale feathers like this, uh, get in touch with me so I can buy all of them from you because that's just... This is bullshit. This sucks. Like, cool. Look at that nice straight feather. That's a good one, huh? Yeah. I'll probably soak them in warm water, or hot water maybe even. Try to straighten those out, but why should I have to do the extra leg work? So, get them in there. I'm going to fold these stems back because I really don't want that to pull out when I'm fishing. Cut the little ends off. And then um, we're just going to UV cure it. Same thing, right? Maybe I'll whip finish it real quick. Okay, that's fine. Get the cure, dab it on there. And then a little on the bottom. Just kind of dab it, move it around. It's fine. Okay. Good. So now we're going to add another 28 millimeter shank. 
And there's a little trick you can do to, to separate this guy because um, they're pretty stiff. I used to try to grab them like this and, and pull and you can do it, it's fine, but it just work smarter, not harder. So get this guy, get your scissors in there and then lay it flat on a table and pry, pry it up. So just get it in there like that, like so. Um, get your scissors in there and just give it a little, it doesn't take much usually it just opens it up it's it's easy to attach now and then pop it out what's going on that's hooked the hook is hooked fat guy and throw it back in If you want, you can get all this BS, chip clip it back here, and then we're gonna we're gonna uh, close up that gap again, right? Sometimes you gotta squeeze it. There we go. And then to close that gap up, right? We're gonna use a little bit of uh, super glue, and we're just gonna put it on the top of that shank. So as we make those loose wraps, it's got something to stick to, right? Just kind of winding it up, not pulling down hard on that bod. Uh, I always get bobbin and bodkin. Like, really guys, he kind of just made it slightly different than that. It's like, oh, it's a bobbin or bodkin. It's like bodkin, bobbin. Just, you should have said like needle point thing and, um, you know, thread holder. Maybe I'll just start doing that. Just keep wrapping until you can't see through that shank anymore with your thread holder. Okay? All the way down the shank. And then make that stick for life and just use the UV Cure. Not a lot, like as little as you can really, but make sure that all that thread's covered. There we go. And again, that's to help that uh, fly to not come up on you. When it jackknifes and it turns 80, you don't want it to, to come all the way around and foul. Um, it's the only fish that you catch probably the least of in winter steelhead or musky. And so everyone that eats, you want that hook where it's supposed to be. Okay. This one's gonna get two pieces of body tubing. I should have brought a beer down here. Anyways. And it's gonna get some flash. So, we'll get our body tubing. Cut about an inch and a quarter of it again. And uh, we want it to stick on those thread wraps, so just a little dot of super glue. This one, since there's gonna be two body tubings, go ahead and start pretty far back on that, on that shank about as far back as you can go. Melt that. Slide it on. All the way back there. Kind of pinch it. And then when you wrap it with that thread, it should adhere to the, the zappa gap, right? And then you want that, as you fold it over, to stick to it as well. So just another little tappy tap of super glue slash zappa gap. And then the key, right? As soon as we light it, we're gonna we're gonna push it back so it doesn't completely close on us. So it's looking pretty good. We'll probably have to take this guy out of the vise because see, it kind of hits it. Not a problem. But it does fold fairly nicely all the way back like, like so. And then just push it forward and you're in business. Just get that shank back in the vise. And I, I went ahead and... Uh, 
bought the the new game changer jaws for the Renzetti Traveler. Um, just wanted to try them out because it, it has been kind of a bitch working with all the shanks with the the normal jaws that the Renzetti comes with. This vise is like 13 years old, by the way. So again, not sponsored by them or anything, but shout out Renzetti because thousands of flies have been tied on this vise and. I mean, she takes a lick and keeps on kicking. So, anyways, the game changer jaws—they're—they're they're nice. They're definitely better. They're not—you're not gonna, you know, tie with them and be like, "Holy fuck, this is, you know, game changer." Pun intended. But you'll be like, "Yeah, this is better." That's my review. This is why I don't get stuff free from them. That's my review. It's better. Then, do you need it? No. Get this stuff. Push it on back. Push it real good. Now you got your nice dam, hit it with the light all the way around, blinded myself there. That's looking just okay. I was going to say great, but it's not, to be honest. Cut that thread off, wrap it in front. And I will say that those shanks uh, where, the, where it ends right there, really sharp. So if you can kind of get some thread wrapped in front of that to kind of block that sharp edge for when you put your bucktail in you'll cut your thread less times and then there's one on the bottom too i don't know if that's making sense but once you start tying them and you break your thread a couple times right there you'll be like oh yeah i know what he's talking about now and then we got to build that thread bump right that thread bump an eighth of an inch in front of this body tubing so just a little Little dot of super glue and just start wrapping because it's going to be a lot of them. Again, you don't need it to be some mega bump, but you definitely, like if you're looking at it and you're like, oh, it's getting there, give it a few more wraps. You, you'll know. It's got to stop that bucktail. So it's got to have some type of height to it. It doesn't have to be, you know, half an inch, but it's. Sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, maybe. No, not an eighth. I don't know. I'm horrible at measurements. Just to where you're like, yeah, that's a bump. Then you're good. Like that. Okay. Um. What are we gonna do here? Chartreuse, I think. I don't know. It's kind of got that tail back there. I thought I was gonna do like chartreuse white, chartreuse white, but I don't know if I like that. I should probably, just to keep with the, so if this is chartreuse white, and the next one is chartreuse whitehead, fuck, I don't know. I should have just done white the whole thing. But here we are. So, let's do chartreuse then. Now this is going to be the tallest part of the fly, so go ahead and get that full number two diameter thickness of bucktail. So you want some... Some girth there. Still pull out all the, the under fur, the shorties and stuff. Just grab the tips of the of the bucktail and just anything that's not long will just get pulled out. It's not a big deal. Also have a dust buster in your fly tying area because it is terrific. So square these ends off, right? Just get that right there. Square them off. Pop it right there. Once over, kind of try to get it down in that in that valley. Second one. And then just start finger fucking it. Pushing that thumbnail, squeezing the shank, spins it around pretty nice too. After a couple of those, revisit the thread wraps. Stuff's going to get loosey-goosey on you. And, uh, yeah, again, she's looking pretty good. A nice kind of even disbursement of that bucktail. That's nice. We're going to trim some of this back. 
That's why the Dust Buster's here. Let's see what's two. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. Just kind of get some of, some of that shit out of the way. And then actually kind of figure eight that stuff. Nice. Uh, throw some more flash in it. This is a little pro tip. When I cut my flash or my materials out, I, I make a cut, an incision <laughs> right here, and then I actually um, cut down the bag. So that way I can just either stick my, my, uh, my uh, scissors in there, or just you can grab it with your finger if you want. And it's going to pull out some of the material, but it's not going to pull out all of it. And you're not trying to pull it out from the bottom and it gets all squiggly. So it just gives you like a little nice section to work with. That's just like a little small, small tip that really has been helpful for me. And then after you cut it, it's like everything's nice and organized. I like it. Um, you don't have to do it like that. But um, it's definitely helped me. So again, somewhere around 10 to 12. Maybe there's 15 in there. I don't think the fish swims up and it's like, well, there's, there's 12. There's 13 in there, so I'm not going to eat it. But I do taper it a little bit, so just pull on a couple um, different pieces just to give them different lengths so it's just not the same length, better movement. And I just tie it kind of straight on top there. Kind of get one wrap, get everything out of the way. Two, three, maybe four. And then basically just using that thumb to kind of spread it around again. This, you don't need it to go 360 degrees all the way around. You just want to cover kind of that top two-thirds, like the top and then some of the side, um, with that flash. And then get the other half. And, um, yeah, tie it straight on top again. Give it a couple wraps and then kind of move it to the side a little bit. You can just do this too, just separate it and kind of move it around. And then just kind of look at it head on. If, uh, you know, if it's on top and it's on the sides, you're good. Don't need to overthink this one. Wrap it forward get ready for our second uh, piece of body tubing. So we're going to need to put a little bit of super glue right there so the body tubing sticks to it. We're going to cut our inch and a quarter length of this. We're going to burn one in. That's going towards the fly. We're going to toss it on. Just kind of sealed on itself right there. So that one just melted all the way. Get to get get as close as you can to it, and then just redo it. Going around once, it's kind of loose. Second, a little tighter. Kind of reef it down. And then, again, maybe just a, li a little touch of super glue um, so it sticks to it when you fold it back on itself. So just put a little bit on top, that's fine. Just touch it with the lighter, right? Just, just touch it and then fold it back. Push it. It takes a little bit getting used to, for sure. Um, doesn't work every time perfect for me, but it works better than sealing the whole goddamn thing up, I'll tell you that much. So that's why it really becomes uh, imperative right there is getting it over all that BS over that, right, to the back. But just, just like anything, practice, and it turns out 
kind of okay. Sounds like my fucking partner is doing a fucking cage match up there at WrestleMania. Just stomping. She's great, though. Okay. Disclaimer. She's great. So, now we're going to tighten it back up. Half hitch it. And, uh, UV cure this time. Because we want it to stay there forever. And all we're doing with this is just going to fold it back over itself, right? Nice. Look at that. That's looking real good. Move your shit around if you need to. Yeah. And then that EV cures in there, so hit it with the light. Move some stuff around here. That's looking good. Okay. Cut it. And wrap it in front again. So another tip to this guy, once you get to this point and you're putting two pieces of body tubing, um, this is just super glue, just a little bit in there. Get the super glue and put it up here, not on the tip, but just like on the sides of that shank going up. It works the same like how we close that gap on the, on the rear of the shank. That's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna close part of the gap on the front of the shank, not because I'm worried about it um, going to foul. Essentially what this does is this gives us more platform to work on. I'm building a platform here that I'm gonna um, then build my thread bump on and then tuck my um, bucktail in. If I, if I try to tie it on this little spot right here, there's just not enough room. So that's something that I just started doing. It's like, oh, well we do it on the rear, let's do it right here. So I put the, uh, the super glue down so I can build it, build the thread going forward and making that kind of thread platform, if you will. And then I just, at the end of it, I don't want to seal that the, the shank hole up, otherwise you can't, you wouldn't be able to tie it on or add another piece. But towards the end of our little platform there, then I, I build the, uh, the thread bump. So just keep wrapping. Keep wrapping thread. You could turn your vise kind of sideways to see the height difference. And once it's kind of significant, you're good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get white bucktail and do the same thing, create the big part of that shoulder. Okay, so let's see. we're going to get some white bucktail. Grab the tips, and we're gonna pull all the underfur out. Just dump it in the trash. That's good. And I'm just gonna take the scissors and just square square those tips off. Oh, that's what she's doing. She's doing a biology project. So she's got to like, like mince or like pulsate a potato and then strain it through some cheese, cheese cloth, which I just went and got. College at home, teaching yourself. Fantastic. So get that bucktail in there. Give it a good pull. One more. Cool, so it's it's in that little reservoir, that little canyon, whatever you want to call it. Okay, just get it back in there. A couple wraps, and then same thing, right? We're just going to kind of manhandle it and, and get that bucktail a-going around that shank the best we can. And we want it all the way around, 360, 360 degrees. Just keep... 
moving it around. And this is a whole, for me at least, a whole skill set that I had to learn. Um, it's a feel thing for sure. Um, I can tell you to get your thumb in there and squeeze the shank and all this other shit. It's just, if you're like me, it's not going to click until you've wasted many hours <laughs> and many flies just, just practicing, um, just practicing it, trying to get that stuff to spin around. How much pressure to apply, you know, where to turn it. Um, so if you're having issues with that part of the fly, you know, don't worry. Um, the good news is you'll get it. The bad news is it just takes practice. Just keep keep at it. But the, the, the speaking, the description of it, it's straightforward. Get your thumbnail in that valley and shift stuff around. Squeeze that shank and, and try to rotate that, um, that bucktail around. You could also go from the front a little bit and kind of move some stuff if you need to. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pull all of it back. Two, three. I don't know why I'm counting. <laughs> Some wraps, a number of wraps in there. Um, pull this back. Trim this up. Pretty good. Nice. And then I'm just basically wrapping the ends of those bucktail fibers uh, to the shank. There's no technique here. Just mash them all around and wrap them in. Once you feel like you got some good wraps going on there, say wrap again. I will. Once you feel like you've got some good wraps in there, um, whip finish, UV cure. So this is kind of tricky. This stuff wants to get caught in there. Mm -hmm. Usually I do two whip finishes at the, ends of the, at the end of these sections. Um, again, I, I just want these flies to last. They take so fucking long, or take me so long to tie them that um, I don't want them to just come unravel and you think, oh god, maybe I should have thrown a second width finish in there. I mean, I put so much fucking UV cure on these things that, like I said, archaeologists are going to find these flies in, you know, 3052 and be like, oh yeah, it's like, still, uh, still attached. So, but I want to be sure of it. So, get the UV out and just... Put a good amount on there. Don't be afraid of the UV cure. On top, and that looks cool. Don't breathe in that stuff. You'll see it kind of burning sometimes. If you use a lot of UV cure, you hit it with the light, it like smokes a little bit. Stuff's bad news, dude. Get, get away from it. Get away fast. You know, blow it away from you or move your head or something, but um, I've caught it in the eyes before. Oh my God. It's like somebody just put a whole habanero in there. I feel like when it starts to bloom up, just give it a little, get out of here. Get out of here, blow. There it is again. It's just, you know, something I love to do, trying to kill me. Story of my life. Okay. Cut that out of the way. Things looking pretty good. Definitely gonna fish this one, except for the fucking shitty saddle hackles. So the final countdown had to say it. The final shank is gonna be going in, and I'm pretty sure Blaine uses a 40 mil. Like I said, I've I've had better luck um, with a 28. He puts three segments of body tubing in i just put two and then finish it with with the big deer hair god why do i keep saying deer i really want to die with some deer hair. uh with bucktail so that's the way i do it probably suggest do it the way blaine does since he's a professional but this is uh 
been working for me. To pop this guy out. It's a sharp out. Pop this guy out. Coming along pretty nicely. Once these lay down, it should look better, hopefully. And then just pop it back in. Get all this out of the way. For most of it. Okay. Wrap our thread. And then we need to close up the rear of that shank again. So you can see it's it's a lot of the same steps over and over. So once you get good at it, it's not really anything to just go through those the, the, the routine of those steps. And um, before you know it, you're like, oh, cool, I've got like a 13 or 14 inch fly. It's not as hard as you would think. I honestly think tying trout flies is much harder. Like, Try tying a fucking jimmy legs. The stupid rubber legs you can never get to like knot correctly and face down. One's like pointing up there, the other one's out to the side. It just looks like just a challenge like fly rolling down the river. Um, you gotta wrap it with lead wire. The hooks are tiny, the thread's breaking all over the place. Like, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, so I don't tie trap flies. I know some guys are really into it. Colby really likes it. Um, I just don't like it. I don't like tying little tiny shits. I don't want to have that fucking magnifying glass. I just I want stuff big. Rant over. So and just keep wrapping until you can't see through the, the shank anymore. And again, just get a little UV cure. This is just to basically make all those thread wraps one solid piece. And this is to stop that fly from fouling on you. Nothing's worse than that. See a big fish hiding in some timber or something and you, you go to cast and you can tell that that fly is just all wonky or even worse yet you're you know, working it through a section something just crushes it and you just come tight nothing's there you pull your fly in and it's fouled up you're just like ugh, just murder face at that point not a happy camper so don't do it that will help you from doing it again there's going to be two pieces of body tube in here so we're going to start in the rear just throw on some uh, super glue and then cut again about a, a quarter uh, an inch and a quarter what have I been saying that I can't remember now like an inch and a quarter length that sounds weird I think I've said it too many times now inch and a quarter I guess throw it on back there One and a quarter inch? I don't know. I'm lost. Throw it back there. Give it some pretty solid wraps. Half hitch it just for shits and giggles. Um, and then the trick, right? Light it, push it. Light it and push it. Push it real good. Uh oh, I fucked it. Oh, did I? No, it's just one to. That'd be great. Okay, I think we'll I think that will work. Now we're gonna put super glue on top because we want that to adhere to it when we when we flip it back over. So I'm gonna have to take the shank out of here. I already know that. So once it gets to that, obviously it's not gonna go through the vise, right? So pull it out of there and just work it over those materials. like so I guess one thing that good that came from messing this fly up so many times and trying to film it like 10 12 times is that I got pretty good at the body tubing so if people are wondering like well how long is it going to take me to figure that shit out like I don't know 15 flies for me well actually that's not true once I I saw a gunner um, do that trick with it it was like the next time I tied, I was like, oh wow, that was really easy. Um, or a lot easier than what I've been doing. And then maybe like, yeah, three or four flies uh, in, and you get a pretty good little groove going. All right? 
So now it's back in. All right, so let's tie this guy in. Move that to where you tied in the first point. good tight wraps there half hitch it and then we're going to hit it with that ev cure and fold it back like they've been doing the rest there's that guy push it back hit it with the light Cut loose, wrap in the front, and then, you guessed it, we're gonna build that thread bump. So just a million wraps in the same spot. And with the gel spun stuff, it definitely helps to put just a little, little dash of super glue so it's got something to kind of stick to. Otherwise, it just wants to um, wants to slide off either side as you're trying to build that that bump, that baby bump. It's not a baby bump, but it is a bump. So just stare at that thread till your fucking eyes cross. And each time it takes a little longer, I feel like, or maybe my patience gets less and less as I get towards the end of the fly. Be sweet if they made shanks that already had that bump in there somehow. I don't know how they would do that, but that would be very useful. That's pretty good, I'd say. Um, so, again, more bucktail. So we're going to alternate the colors, so back to chartreuse. Back to two-thirds, kind of, of a pencil. You want that middle section kind of the tallest and the, and the thickest. Just pulling all those guard hairs out, doing the same thing, basically, again. And then I'm going to you know, just get those and just square it, right? Definitely need new scissors because that did not cut great. Put it right there. Flip it. Pull it down into that little valley. One more. Pull it down into that valley and then maybe two more turns. The nice and good bucktail, that's something else I've noticed, that's all just smooth and it's kind of soft, maybe not, might not be the right word, but it just spins around the shank so much easier than shitty bucktail. So it pays to get, if that's not obvious, pays to tie with good materials. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I'm going to look from the front, make sure that the whole, that whole shank is covered 360 degrees. You know, if it's a little sparser on the bottom, it's not the end of the world. You just don't want it sparse on top. That looks pretty good. Pull this back, little trim job trim job yeah it's looking pretty good and then again just kind of work your thread through it back and forth tie all that down eventually
Cool. Pretty sure my battery just died. Let me swap that. And it did. Okay, so another piece of body tubing going on there. Final piece. Little zap a gap there. Getting our inch and a quarter. That's how you say it. Oh, why was it sounding weird last time? Inch and a quarter body tubing. Melt the end. Toss it on. Wraps. So if you ever hear that kind of almost sounds like a tearing sound um, when you're tying flies, especially it seems with the GSP stuff, it has hit some type of snag, a sharp piece of the shank, or even some of this melted plastic, and it is fraying your thread. So if you keep with tension, you're gonna break your thread. So if you hear that, try to look. This thing, it was just a little bit of, of the um, melted plastic. So I softly wrapped over it and then I pulled tight and it just sucked it up. So it's kind of pro tip. This guy, push it back. Ooh, she that was spicy, she was hot that time. And then gonna throw just, oh fuck, you know what? You can throw, um, this is gonna be advanced. Usually I don't do it like this, but I almost forgot. I, I do want to throw some, um, what is it, uh, hen saddle in there. So sometimes I get two, sometimes I get three. I'm going to do two this time. And I, I stagger them, I guess. So like the top one sticks out and then the next one's a little bit below. Does that do anything? I don't know. Maybe it moves a little bit more. Not sure, not 100% sure, but creature habit, so we'll just stick to it. So just kind of, just like that, and just lay them on the sides. That's a little long, actually. They don't need to be that long, the peck feathers. That, I'm gonna tie it right onto this body tubing, I guess. We'll do a little, a little Mr. Fix It. So we got two of these. Same thing, just we're gonna kind of peel away the parts we don't need. And we're just gonna put them on this side. So normally I would I would have uh, tied these in before this body tubing, but I forgot. So here we are. But I think it's going to work out. So I put them there. I'm going to put some super glue. Then what I think I'm going to do even is get a little UV cure and just put it right on the stems if I can. I have any left in there. Come on, bud. This one's like almost out. They're both almost out. And then the same thing on this side because I can see they're already trying to want to turn. There we go. And so the plan is to kind of hold them where I want them, hit them with the light. Don't breathe that stuff in. And now it's going to get a little messy when I fold this guy back, but I think it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Just like so. There we go. And push it forward. So yeah, if you forget a step, See if you can kind of wing it and make it work anyways. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but you don't know until you try.
motivational talk of the day. Just kidding. Throw the fly in the trash, start over. In this case, I didn't. Wrapping it, half hitching it, UV curing it, and folding it back. There we go. So that's going to kind of protect those little hen saddles anyways. Turned out all right. Hit it with the light. We are almost done. Thank God, because I am hungry. And I would like a beer. This looks good, though. I'd fish this. Let's just try not to shit the bed at the very end here, okay? So, wrapping the thread. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the... Uh, the previous one where I, I built that little bridge so you can see that that gap is big so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap thread up about halfway using super glue to kind of hold it on that hold it on the uh, the shank without it um, sliding back towards our materials my table just moved so again Get this out of the way just for a second. So, wrap up the thread. Just nice and kind of soft wraps. If you pull too hard, again, it's going to, um, it is going to slide down. So, about a little bit more than halfway up, try to build your your uh, thread ball. And about halfway through that, just a little touch of super glue. Maybe spin your thread to give it a little edge. And then continue. You can kind of turn your vise on the side and you can get a better read of, of how thick that, that uh, thread ball is, how high it is. You definitely want it higher than the shank by uh, an amount you know you don't want it like oh is it higher I can't tell if you can't tell you're not there yet it doesn't need to be giant but it needs to be significantly higher than the shank because that's what stops the bucktail from sliding back right let's see so we're gonna go with are we going to really finish it with white? That seems kind of stupid, doesn't it? Big white head. I don't know. Otherwise, it's going to look weird if I do chartreuse again. I say we just, we keep it going. So far, so good. It looks good. So let's go ahead and just use white, right? Now, dealer's choice here, you can go with two-thirds of a number two pencil. I love how that's just... What everybody goes by now it's just that is like the only diameter people know um i go for a full number two pencil i like the the head of these flies to have some bulk so um it's very very small difference between two thirds and, and a full number two pencil diameter i guess um but i found that i i don't have to add any what i don't like doing is adding um bucktail after I've already put it in this little canyon. So a pretty good chunk. Around. Around again. Kind of pull it towards that body tubing. What you don't want to do is get it on that side of the body tubing. Or on that side of your thread bump. Then you're fucked. You gotta start over. So, pinching, twisting, re-tightening down, right? You guys are getting it. Mm-hmm. It's actually looking pretty good.
So look at it from the front, make sure there's not any real gaps, meaning like it's real thick on top and then real sparse on the bottom. Not what you want. It's looking pretty good. Okay, and then we're just going to trim some of this back again. And you could probably reverse tie that final buck, bucktail in there um, for a cleaner looking head. Jack was giving me shit the other day because um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a dumpster fire up top here. But I don't care. I like uh, I like tying them like this. Uh, it's either having like kind of a bulky head here or reverse tying it in. And, but then you're going to have all that thread to you know having that thread dam built up to try to have that bucktail lay down. So six in one, half a dozen in the other, as my buddies say. I just tie it in like so, do a little trimming, I think it looks fine. Yeah, and then uh, whip it, get that finisher in there. back do one more that's basically it yeah feeling good about this one. This one's looking, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that I uh, screwed so many of those other ones up because the ones I tied not on video looked great. Let's be honest, they didn't look great. They, they were okay. I was satisfied with them. I fished them. The ones I tied on video were fucking dog shit. I mean, just horrible. Everything went wrong and didn't turn out right. Um, we got lucky with this one. You know, practice makes okay. That's what I always say. And whew, get that stuff out of here. Um, yeah, now it's just basically locking it, locking it up. Just any any spot where there's thread or anything. I'm definitely trying to get. Um, that UV cure in there because I want that that head to be locked tight, like no chance of thread coming undone, something unspinning, deer hair getting, or uh, how do we say that, uh, bucktail getting pulled out. Just I want this fly to last. I'm even gonna do some sneaky stuff, and because there's some thread wraps that are in there, like inside the, the eye of that. So, I'm gonna do one of those. Like going into that eye, again, I just, there's, if there's thread in there, I just wanna make sure that it's, it is not going anywhere. And I feel like that's pretty much it. We've got our little side, little hen saddles over there. Um, you kind of readjust some stuff if you want. Yeah, that looks good. And so, yeah, that's the whole kit and caboodle right there. Um, it is the T-Bone. Get this guy out of here for a second. Um, 
not a lot of material to be honest i mean there's a lot of steps in tying it but actually the amount of material on this fly not a ton um but the action of it is is awesome um as you strip these guys through the water they have a ton of motion you strip it you know you strip it nice and easy and it's it's doing one of these a lot of fluttering you strip it hard and it just whoosh, comes and this thing goes Burr! i mean it's just total 90 and then it will start to kind of sink with the full intermediate you give it a little strip it does a little serpent i mean the thing the best moving fly i've i've personally tied i'm sure there's a lot of fly designers out there that are just like oh you're a fucking dumbass you should see this fly you should see that fly send them to me Send me those flies so I can see them, and then I'll eat my own words. But so far, the flies I've tied and the ones I've seen in the water, the T-bone, dude, thing is good. So we're going to tie a few of these, I think, going forward in, in trout sizes, so maybe something like that size, four inches, something like that. Um, yeah, and, and fish them this, uh, this summer. I'm going to go to Wyoming and couple other spots for a few days so it should be interesting to see but yeah i'm liking the way this looks uh next time i'm out on the lake um is that thread or is that bucktail that is i don't know it's long um anyways the next time i'm out oh, that's bucktail uh on the lake um i'll try to just take a quick uh footage of these swimming so you can actually see what they look like because just putting them in like my bathtub or something isn't going to do anything. It's just going to look like something wet going like that. Uh, one thing I will suggest is just um, getting a, a, a bodkin or just a stupid little needle point or whatever. Putting it through here like so. And then just putting it under like really hot water at your sink. And just let it run over there for, you know, five minutes or so. And then laying it down just on something that won't suck the color out of there. So don't lay it on like a paper towel or, a, or something like that. Just lay it on the hard countertop. Um, that will help fold these things back. I'm gonna grab one right here. So when they're in your box or something like that, um, this hasn't been fished yet. That's just what, uh, that's what it looks like um, after you run hot water over them. So they, they take a little bit more of a, of a taper, uh, they look better to you, and you're just like, oh yeah, I'll fish that. So that's like not even that big. You could fish that for trout if it wasn't on a six odd. You'll fucking skull fuck a, a fish. So yeah, that's it. That's the T-bone. Um, tie them up, catch some fish, or don't.